Hey guys, welcome back. You guys that are here the first time, my name's Anthony, welcome to my shop. We're gonna be doing an exterior um, woodworking project today. This is a potting bench. You can uh, plant things on here, uh, put soil in the pots, put the plants in, everything. It has uh, some spacing in between the slats. That's gonna be for drainage and dirt to fall through. Also, uh, water when it rains, when you leave this outside, it won't sit on top, it'll drain through, and you won't have any puddling up there, ruining the finish, making it uh, wear prematurely. All right, so the whole thing is constructed of all white oak, which is rot and insect resistant. So that's a good choice for it. Um, there are other good choices out there. You could use cedar, you can use, um, Pressure treated if you're really looking to save some money because white oak is not cheap. All right, guys, so let's uh, let's build this thing. Stick around. First, I'll get started by cutting all the parts to rough length and rough width, and then I'll go back and cut everything after it dries out. After I've milled it up, I want to get the moisture content down below about 11, 12%, and then this way I can cut it to its final dimensions, and this way I know it's not going to ever move. Now these boards, they started off roughly around 15%, which is somewhat dry, but they gotta be down below, for me, 11, maybe 10% for me to start working with them to put them in the final dimensions to know that they're not gonna twist and warp. I'm cutting a notch in all the under supports for the top, bottom, and the upper shelf, and that's just going to be like the end of a trestle. Okay guys, so really quick, you can see that I flipped over the top portion of the workbench here, or the pottery bench. This is gonna be an outdoor pottery bench. It's gonna sit in the elements and everything like that. Uh, water is gonna hit it from the rain and, and wind and stuff like that. So you don't need to go crazy getting it up to 220. Uh, 150, 120, that's gonna be good enough. So we're gonna hit it lightly like that. I've already done the underside by hand and it's easier to sand it now than to worry about it later once you get all the back legs and upper tier for the shelf and everything like that. So let's get to sand it and then this way we can start to build the base. Now to have the lower support leg and the support for that lower shelf be in exactly the same spot on both legs on both sides of the potting bench, I've screwed together two pieces of wood to act as a stop. And what I'm gonna do is clamp those on the bottom of the legs. It's hooking over the bottom of the leg and coming down about six, six and a half inches. And then I'm going to take the lower leg support and put it up against those two blocks, clamp it in place, glue it in and screw it together. Okay, so I cut the pieces for the bottom shelf and I have them just sitting there. They're not affixed yet to the legs, which I'm gonna do now. I'm going to pre-drill and screw them right into the cross braces here. Then what I'll have to do is cut a center apron support for the bottom shelf the way I did for the top here because given the length of this, you will have a little bit of flex even though these are three quarter inch thick pieces of white oak and they're very hard needs a little bit of support. So that cross piece right along the middle, screwed in, will give that the rigidness that it needs. So when they do put 
um, pots that have soil or bags of soil or anything underneath like that, tools and stuff, it's not gonna sag over time. All right, so let's uh, screw that in. I played around with the spacing here. Um, instead of doing the same size as the top for the bottom shelf, I gave it a little bit of a design element here. Um, a large board, smaller board, large board, smaller, and a large board here. When you do something like this, you gotta kinda play around with the spacing. So that's what I've done because, you know, when you have a certain size opening and you wanna, you know, have a design element, the measurements are not gonna be just usually simple math. You're gonna have to, you know, mess around with it a little bit and see what you can come up with. And this is what I came up with here. I got just about a half inch uh, gap for drainage and uh, soil to fall through. And now I'm going to screw it in and that's gonna give me uh, good rigidness in the cross bracing. And then we're gonna get started on rear leg supports and the upper tier shelf. I'm gonna find where I need the center of this bottom cross brace to be for the center support so the shelf doesn't move. This is going to go right here in the center underneath and that is gonna give it the rigidness it needs, hold all the boards together you know, in the center as well. And that's the same design element as the top apron. I just cut a little notch out. So that's gonna go straight down here. And the way I'm gonna find that is I found the center of center support and I made a mark in the center of the bottom shelf. And then what I'm gonna do is line up my center mark here. And then what I'm gonna do is move my square over. I'll put a square on this side so you can see what I'm doing. Butt it up against there and center this and now i'm going to move the square over and i'm just going to draw two lines on each board no need to go across the whole thing this is just small reference reference lines and what those reference lines are going to give me is the areas where i need to pre-drill and countersink the holes for the screws so that once I have those holes, I can put this underneath and line it up and screw it all down. Okay, so at the back of the unit here, what I did was I got the center of my center support brace of the upper tier half shelf. And I put a clamp on it where I want it. I marked the locations where there were other screws on this part. I'm gonna be screwing this in through the center here and I'm just gonna take a square and I'm gonna make sure that I'm perfectly square. It's perfect on both sides. And before I put the glue, I'm gonna pre-drill, then I'll remove it and put the glue. So I'm gonna put two two inch screws up here and then two smaller one and a quarter screws on the bottom. Okay, so what I've done here at the back of the unit is just clamp the cross braces in place and so the first one, what I'll do is I'll come to the side here and I'm just gonna scribe a line. That's gonna be my cut line for this angle. And then from this side here, I'll have to sneak the pencil in, but I have the room to do it and just scribe the line. And that's gonna be my second cut line. So I wanna clamp this now, like this. And you can see I have the angles I need. Okay, so I've pre-drilled everything because the dry fit was good, so I'm gonna put a little glue. And then, since the battery on my DeWalt died, I'm gonna be using the Kimo. And if you haven't seen the video on this, it's really cool, actually, I have it on my channel. But I haven't used this in a couple of weeks. Battery's still full, haven't charged it. Okay, so now for the top upper half tier shelf, I've cut pieces 
that are going to match the underneath of the top and bottom shelf there and they're going to be screwed in like this and that's how we're going to support the upper half shelf it's only going to be about 12 inches you know which is uh or just about a little less than half the width of this this is 28 in width from front to back the depth if you want to call it and the upper shelf is going to be 12. to give this upper shelf a little bit more support even though it's strong i just made these little diagonal braces 45 on each side Put a little glue on the end grain, then I'm going to tack nail them in. One and a quarter inch brads hold them in place. That'll keep it from dipping when they put some weight on top. Okay, so now to get even spacing, I want it to be a little bit smaller than the half inch gap I have here on the main table. So I'm going to use a little bit thicker than a quarter inch shim. I'm going to put that right in there as a spacer. And then I'm going to take a board, line it up, make sure it's even. Not spring and exterior finish. This is rated for outdoors. It's general finishes exterior 450. Alright everybody, this project is done, so thanks for joining me in the shop. I hope you guys enjoyed the build. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that little picture of a notification bell that'll notify you every time I upload a video, which usually is on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis, but things have been a little crazy lately, so uh, it's been a little bit uh, you know, slow getting in the shop and getting things done. I've been working on this thing for like a month, just here and there, an hour at a time, whenever I could. Uh, haven't had a lot of uh, days off. Now that I'm back in the shop, hopefully we can do a lot uh, lot more projects, uh, shop tour, I got a lot in store for you. If you like any of the tools or any of the, um, the products that I use, I'm gonna link them in the description box below. That'll be an Amazon link. Uh, please, if you're gonna purchase those tools or any of the materials, then uh, purchase them through those links that will help support this channel to help me make better content for you, the viewers and subscribers. All right guys, so don't forget, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time in the shop. The only thing I got left to do now that three coats of the exterior finish are dry is go and deliver it. All right guys, I'll see you next time.